Europe is moving towards the right. And I think that this is pretty safe to say now. You know, lots of people have been saying it prematurely. But now, as uh, Herr Wilders uh, has said here, the Netherlands, Hungary, Belgium, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Sweden, France, Spain, uh, the Czech Republic, and today, Austria. Of course, this was from uh, yesterday. <laughs> and he's saying, we are winning. And of course, he is, of course, the leader of the Freedom Party uh, in the Netherlands. And so this is quite significant that he's listing off all these countries that are seeing meaningful right-wing movements that are sort of alternatives to the regime approved sort of center-right they're a bit more populist and a bit better on immigration usually Weird except how for the Romanians, Italy the Romanians never mention this right mm -hmm. they're like we should rejoin Europe it's like what the far-right Europe you should yeah I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit of regret here <laughs> it's like actually the continent's sort of outdoing this a little bit here so uh, well done if you voted for any of the uh, the parties here that are right-wing in those countries mm. and so another thing that is revitalizing europe is islander magazine not it, overstatement at all no no it's of course it's it totally is. true yeah more so than electoral politics this magazine is, is restoring european men and women um with the the vitality they need and uh, think, think of it like 17th century pamphleteering <laughs> you know it's, we're bringing it back mm -hmm. we're we're gonna be revolutionaries mm -hmm. in a way so here it is. There is the magazine. 14.99 great British pounds. Not very much to have your life changed by an amazing work of art. Again, that's not overstating at all. It's a no. genuinely life-changing magazine. <laughs> no, I I'm I'm really looking forward to reading it when, you know, I finally get my hands on a copy I'm allowed to read. So it's, it's a good one. You are allowed to read, I think. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> Looks know what I'm doing after this. But anyway, <clears throat> buy the magazine. It's only going to be there for a short time. There's also mugs and t-shirts as well, which are cool buy them anyway i like your sales pitch just buy them just yeah just buy them yeah stop making excuses just buy them so obviously austria has seen the the far right party as the bbc calls it uh it's not even come quotes. first it's not I even know. quotes it's as if they're as if it's as if this is their platform mm -hmm. you know we're a center-left party oh we're a center-right oh we're the far right party okay. yeah it's funny how they always yeah. take people at their word unless they're you know a populist right-wing party mm. but there we go there's the scary word but it hasn't put off the austrians apparently uh <laughs> carl no carry on i know why you're laughing so i wanted to talk through some of the results and who the parties are if you're outside of austria if you're inside of austria um then it might be um, a little bit more difficult but anyway you can't really see what's going on here i don't know why this has happened but um at the top there is FPO, which is the Freedom Party of Austria, at 29.2%. And uh, they're a nationalist party, believe it or not. They want stricter measures on migration. They're also Eurosceptic. They're also very critical of sanctions with Russia and want more normalized relations with them. And uh, this is the first time in a national council election that they have come first. So it is historic as well. And then following them... Sorry, can I just oh. interrupt that? Like, so that... <clears throat> That wouldn't have been an unusual thing to have heard in the 1990s after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. right? All of these things, oh, we're, we're for freedom, we're for the normalization of relations, we're for peace, we're for prosperity, we're for people living their lives. This this is not like some radical right-wing agenda. This, no. This is the 90s liberal consensus. That it for. is. It's just taking things back a little bit, but I think yeah. that people are so hesitant to give up on it because once this gets momentum and people realize that actually it's tangibly made their lives better yes then it's going to upset the uh, current paradigm and i tell you what things were tangibly better 30 years ago absolutely i mean i wasn't alive but yeah, I, can tell. I was i remember it but um yeah this is their leader this is a guy called herbert uh, kickel i think i don't know how to pronounce his name but you also have um the austrian people's party the ovp there coming in second at 26.5 percent they're a centre-right party, um, allegedly socially conservative, oh, and yeah. they're economically liberal. What's um, the LGBT wing say? Yeah, good question. Mm. But yes, they, they were second as well. And then finally, you have the, the SPO, which is your bog-standard left-wing party. Their platform is the same as all other left-wing parties ever. And of course, the same goes for the Greens as well, who actually were in coalition with the OVP, if that yeah. gives you an indication of how conservative they are they go into coalition with the greens and of course you also have um 
NEOS, NEOS, I think, mm. at 9% there. Um, they're just a liberal party that are very pro-EU. Question, do you know if the KPO is the is a communist party? I don't know. I, they're so irrelevant that I didn't even look them up. Yes, because like there the was a, a communist party, party in Austria some about a year ago, and they were saying that it's going to be massive. It's going to get, get close to 12%. Oh, yeah. It looks like it wasn't. Mm -hmm. who, who are the beer party and what's their platform? The beer party. Yes, yeah, Stelios, look that up. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, Communist Party of Austria, the KPO. Okay. They were rumored to get close to 12, but now it mm -hmm. looks like 2.3. You know. So what, what about the beer party? Yeah. Beer party. I mean, yeah. beer is forever. I want a beer party. I mean, it is it actually me. beer? Because I think in Germany it would be B-E-I-R. So I think I might be slightly disappointed <laughs> with the Beer party, party Austria. Here it is. Yeah. It's a, it's B I E R. So what are they offering? They actually for beer. It says Stunts. it says here minor Austrian satirical party. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> they got trolls. They, a party of trolls. They got yeah, percent. But, but they're yeah. selling me just on the name alone. I'm just yeah. saying. Anyway, sorry. Can't continue. If, if they need like a beer, beer and bratwurst party, and that would just do well. The it? beer party, almost mm -hmm. as popular as the communist party, mm -hmm. both satirical. It's also worth mentioning this guy here. So he's the current chancellor and the leader of the OVP, the the centre right party, called Karl uh, Niehammer or Nehammer. I don't know how to pronounce his name, right. but he's a, a key figure who I'll be bringing up in a bit. Is this a toothpaste commercial? Because he has really white teeth. He does, yeah. Um, his dentist will be very There's proud of him. Nothing wrong with dental health. Mm -hmm. I didn't say there was. Just an observation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's worth mentioning as well that because they only got twenty nine percent, they're not necessarily going to directly go into government, and so they've got to form a coalition. And it's speculated that this could drag on for months. And if there's one thing the centre right party have done, it's looked around to every leftist and said, "Guys, we need a coalition right now." Well, that seems somewhat likely. How did I know? Mm -hmm. How did I know? Math. Because he might take the sort of similar thing as they've, they've done in France God. and they've tried to do in the Netherlands and in other parties as well mm. in Europe of just trying to keep out the yeah. the alternative right party. Conservatives really are just the right wing of the left, aren't they? Well, of course, I yeah. can't stand it. Man. Mm -hmm. So it could also be the case that... The coalition um, of losers. The, the FPO and the OVP form a coalition, yeah. but without uh, Kickle... I'm probably mispronouncing that, um, as their leader, as uh, happened in the Netherlands to Hert Wilders, um, because basically Nehammer said, it's impossible to form a government with someone who adores conspiracy theories. That's his words, the current chancellor. And it's also unlikely, I think, that he um, Kickel would agree to that, but it's not necessarily impossible because Wilders also agreed to a coalition where he was not the leader, hmm. despite his party doing the best. But conspiracy theories are so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> also, if um, I think it's also worth considering that there are intelligence agencies that do do things in a conspiratorial way. That that does happen. Like uh, the Nord Stream pipeline, that was a conspiracy of some kind, no matter who did it. So yeah, but they're the boring ones. I'm more interested in the big questions, such as who benefits from denying the flat Earth. Like who? <laughs> who is the? What that's is the, not a conspiracy. Well, no, there's a conspiracy to cover up the fact oh, that the Earth is flat, right? And we're actually surrounded by an ice wall. But who benefits from this? What, what, what's the point of the conspiracy? Well, I think well, it I'm, ties in quite nicely to some other conspiracies. I did some digging, and they they believe a certain mid-century German is still alive and oh, living right. in Antarctica. Hitler benefits from the conspiracy of the flat for Earth. some reason. Right, okay. I thought you were going to say Bigfoot, to be honest. But well, we uh, I mean, Bigfoot's a different conspiracy. Mm -hmm. He's tied in with aliens, but. If this Freedom Party does form a coalition, the EU would be facing basically a Eurosceptic populist bloc mm. in the right, encompassing lots of countries, all those countries we listed, but Austria, Hungary, Slovakia, and potentially Czechia in the future as well, because they've got an election uh, next year, I think. And so it could be that the European Union has more sceptics than actual believers in it, which would be quite an interesting development for Europe. And once again, Britain lags behind every other political change that happens. Yes. We're stuck with a radical left-wing government. Oh, God. Well, all of a sudden, those rejoiners are going to yeah. sound hilarious when they're just like, let's rejoin the far-right EU. Yeah, I agree. You have Grayley. <laughs> What's Grayley <laughs> yeah, going to yeah, say? Yeah, exactly. What is he going to say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
They're going to switch sides. But it's also interesting as well. What happens when the EU leaves the ECHR? <laughs> they, they'll just abolish it, won't yeah, they? Exactly. It won't apply anymore. Yeah. And therefore, we'll be free of it as well. So, Well, I, I think the ECHRC or he, whatever. It's part of the European Court of Justice, which yeah, it's is separate not a, from yeah, the it's EU. It's not part yeah. of the EU. Mm-hmm. So the EU member states could all leave it and just leave it there, essentially governing Britain. <laughs> like, we'd be the last thing mm. in it. I know, God. it'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? But also I mean, interesting. Would be hilarious, but infuriating at the same time. So men and women also voted pretty much on parity for the uh, Freedom Party as well, which is <clears> interesting <throat> because normally we've seen these parties yeah. erring towards uh, men more than women. And in fact, the BBC's analysis of it suggested that more women voted for the Freedom Party than men, which Based. is, yeah, fair play. Also, the age bracket 35 to 59 were the most likely to back, which is slightly different than... Um, the AFD and National Rally in France, I think, in terms of the most populous category, which is good because it suggests that these messages are resonating with a wider demographic of people than simply yeah. just young people who have no prospects or future. Sorry, did women not vote for the beer party? Apparently it's not. Disappointing. There we go. They don't like beer, do they? That's Generally no. Well known. Yeah. So, also... Um, Ralph Schollhammer also pointed this out, that, you know, a country of 7 million, Austria, is able to uh, wrap up their election. Polling stations closed at five. They counted all the ballots by midnight. It's 9 million, but yeah. Oh, 9 million, sorry. Okay. Misre- got them around sorry, the wrong way. Don't Thank don't you. Don't and uh, in Arizona, they can't do the same thing, even though there are 2 million less. Mm. So that's, that's just something to think about there. I mm. wanted to include that one. So... Let's have a look at the reason why Austria has been doing this, because I think that they've been uh, receiving the brunt of migration based on things like this. Nearly one out of three Austrians is of foreign origin, which is insane. You know, we we thought we had it bad here, but 27% of Austrian nationals are either first or second generation immigrants, apparently. Close to 33%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over 27, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And also this, one third of primary school children in Vienna are Muslims, overtaking Catholics as the largest religious group, which would just be unheard of 10, 15 years ago, perhaps. You know, this go back 100 and, and this is another sort of conquest of Vienna here. Yeah. You need the Poles to come in. Yeah. Sort Jan, it out. Jan Sobieski's just rotating in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here we have this. Because of the infiltration of all of the schools loads of teachers fled and this was because not only were there large numbers of muslims and they're worried about how their teaching would be received at home so to speak also they just found it impossible to teach the children because a a decent portion of them could not even speak the language as in they, they they had to repeat what they were saying to the point whereby it made teaching pointless and it completely broke down the entire education system to the point whereby They just couldn't do their job and resigned. And I mean, of, oh, go you, ahead. you lose your culture if that's the case. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I don't think that, you know, yeah. there should be any Islam or any second language you know, speakers in the classroom at all. If you're slowing down other children, your liability, you, you don't deserve to be there. You don't have to. I don't, is, I don't like the utilitarian answer, though. It's mm-hmm. just, no, in Austria, you speak German. Because mm-hmm. that's the traditional language of Austria, right? I thought that was implicit, but it was yeah. just making another but, argument on top of that. Sure, yeah, but I, I think we should be more firm about the, you no. Know, when you come, you know, when in Rome, you do as the Romans do, or mm-hmm. you don't come. Well, I would know. rather they just not come to Europe well, at all. I, I agree, but it seems a bit late um, for that, doesn't it? I want to add something, because when we're talking about elections, it's very usual for us to just look the short-term effects of policies. But uh, we should also bear in mind that everything you show right now has massively negative long-term effects unless some policies are being pursued. And I'm just looking at here, the current fertility rate for Austria in 2024 is Mm 1.57, which is just ridiculous if we bear in mind. I I reject, whenever immigration comes up and people bring up fertility, I sort of want to just say it's not relevant at all. Yeah. I, just, I don't want to concede any ground to that argument that, you know, we do, we need in any way, shape or form 
uh, foreign peoples in our country because we've got a sub replacement fertility rate. Yeah, it doesn't change it. You know, it the, the population the, rate. the population in the UK has remained about forty million native Brits for the past twenty, thirty years. And it's well, going to remain in England, anyway. in, 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 England, England, yeah, in England. In England, in England and Wales, it's been about 44, 45 million. Mm -hmm. So, and in Scotland, you've got another like eight million or something. But you are, you are right. I mean, yeah, it's what, remained it, static. And even if yeah. it goes down a little bit, I think um, you know about forty million is more than enough to sustain a population. Yeah. It's not like we're going to run out of people. It's not like we're in the thousands, is it? But even then, I mean, okay, well, even if we do need to improve our birth rates, which we probably do, why are we entering into a breeding competition with? A bunch of foreigners we've imported. Mm -hmm. Do we agree to that? I well, I'm, that. I'm of the. I sort of take the Rourke's drift position on <laughs> Europeans. In the, <laughs> go on. I don't know what that means. As in, we don't need as many people to to you oh, know, right, right. stand up for ourselves. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. what did you think I was going to say? Well, I don't know. I didn't. Wait. I mean, I know what Rourke's drift is. So I was just like, okay, where's this, where's this going? You know. But we, anyway, we shouldn't be in a breeding competition. No, it doesn't improve birth rates. Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, but presumably, if you don't want to enter in a breeding competition, you shouldn't allow people who are entering in a breeding I agree. competition with you. I exactly. Agree. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that also we shouldn't be paying for other people to to be winning that competition either. But uh, another thing that lots of people heard about was mm. uh, this Taylor Swift concert being cancelled due to a terror threat from an Islamic State convert. This was back when was it? In August. So that, that was international news because, of course, their problems with Islam run uh, so deep that they're having to cancel things now. Mm. And um, there was this as well. Afghan murder suspect detained at Berlin airport, accused of stabbing wife to death in Vienna. Of course, no point him being there. This is an unnecessary burden on the Austrian people. Um, it's the st pretty standard mm -hmm. consequences of... Our great strength, is But it? these are just the things that have happened in the past couple of months leading yeah. up to the election. Yeah. Like the military needs to patrol migration <laughs> hotspots. It's our um, great at strength, least um, what the Freedom Party said yeah. um, right before the election. Which I, I think is actually a reasonable thing because that they are the most dangerous places, where, the places mm. that receive the most migration now. We know this, we have the crime data, it's true all over Europe. So there's also this one as well. Um, they've refused to accept illegal migrants because Germany's now decided that they actually like borders. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, all of these rejected people um, are being pushed over to Austria. And so they're having problems with that in the lead up to the election, which probably helped the Freedom Party because all of a sudden they had a spike and mm -hmm. that made it all the more serious a problem to solve. As well as um, uh, the Freedom Party applauding Hungary's move to ship the migrants to Brussels probably help them Based. along which doing, is doing like the uh what was it greg abbott yeah, in yeah texas yeah, yeah. yeah shipping them to yeah. new york you like, the, like you that. like migrants so much well you can have them mm -hmm. and then also um bavarian government is yeah. trying to make them take them which probably brussels can take them yeah probably unpopular i imagine and then finally um this was shortly before the election itself um it turned out that the migrants were getting luxury apartments for yeah, the refugees, supposedly, um, which sparked lots of protests. It used so to be here a joke. Are. It used to be a joke. Oh, you know, the far right think they're going to get luxury apartments. Well, here we go. Well, th yeah, there they are. Proof. And so it seems like um, the Austrian electorate have seen the problem that migration is facing. I mean, a third of their population is now no longer Austrian. And I think that that's probably enough. And I don't think that things are going to get better if, it continues, and so they're only going to continue voting in this direction until things start to improve. And the way I see it is that yeah. the way all of Europe is going is trending towards at least ending mass migration, if not starting remigrating people, because the, the multicultural experiment has failed. That's why so many countries in Europe have sided more along the right wing of politics, because this isn't working. I hope you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters. And if you want to see what else we're putting out, you can follow Dan's series, Brokenomics. Here he's playing poker for some reason. If you want to follow all the other things we're putting out, you can follow us on Twitter. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.